Chapter 9. Sad State of a Community in Diaspora. A Profile of People in Bondage in the Land of Liberty and Freedom. Paradventure and in the very likely event you bump into a black person in Houston, Texas, USA, that part of the globe which is reputed for its freedom and liberty, and your uninvited acquaintance happens to be constantly looking over his shoulder or talking of imaginary spiritual forces and enemies monitoring and trailing him, your guess may be considered and informed if it leads to the conclusion that the frightened individual is of African nationality, more likely a West, East, and South African extraction. Your informed and intelligent guess may also lead you to conclude the individual either belongs to one of the many homegrown, traditionally doctrinal and doctored churches which specialize in exploiting the vulnerability and weakness of their own kind, or perhaps remotely controlled by false pastors or prophets or prophetesses from faraway Africa, the so-called spiritual fathers and mothers in the Lord whose specialty is in hawking, reinforcing, and feeding their victims with lies and spiritual fear of the unknown in exchange for dollars. Of a sad fact is that the victim, like most of his brothers and sisters in his community, might have been residing in the United States of America for countless years and perhaps has achieved one of the highest levels of academic accomplishments or degrees. But how does one comprehend why such highly educated and supposedly knowledgeable individuals in the land of freedom and liberty have suddenly found themselves not only wallowing in fear and darkness, but allowing themselves to be easily manipulated, deceived, controlled, and subjected to bondage by half-baked, self-made false pastors, prophets, and prophetesses parading themselves as servants of the Most High? While some are shamelessly and remotely controlled by these false pastors, prophets and prophetesses and prayer gurus from far away Africa, who feed them with fear, leading to bondage of mind, yet others are victims of some imported homegrown and brewed traditional churches, which are modeled after fetish doctrine, belief and satanic ritualistic practices. Please permit me to say, that I am not here speaking in terms of outright disapproval or condemnation of African churches in the United States. Rather, to state the obvious, the proliferation of some of these churches with their antichrist doctrinal belief and practices has ushered in such an alarming and abominable number of agents of darkness, manipulation, deception, lies, and idolatrous covetousness in that by hawking, reinforcing, and perpetuating spiritual fear of the unknown, they have succeeded in setting the hands of spiritual and physical progress and development clock of some of our people back to the Dark Stone Age. Let it be known that there are some good African-based churches in the United States, but the few which preach and practice heresies like generational curses an eye for an eye, death to their enemies, Holy Ghost fire, die by fire against their supposed enemies, contrary to the gospel and doctrine of Jesus Christ, are enemies of the cross. These are the ones who perpetrate violence against the kingdom of God and their people. They are worse than the Pharisees of Christ's time, whose evil deeds must be exposed and stopped for they have ushered in massive influx of spiritual fear, devilish and blasphemous doctrine and practices all designed to make merchandise of their brothers and sisters. As it is written, for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 to 19. Again, the apostle Peter, lamenting about the roles of these false prophets, stated thus, 
but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Again, he, Peter, stated the obvious. While they promised them liberty, ritualistic deliverance and liberation, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For by whom a person is overcome, by him also he is brought into bondage. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 19. The Apostle Paul emphatically stated that such false prophets must be stopped. For there are many insubordinate, both idle talkers and deceivers, especially those of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things which they ought not for the sake of dishonest gain. Titus chapter 1 verses 10 to 11. The scripture says that while knowledge increases power, people do perish for lack of it. See Proverbs chapter 24 verse 5 and Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. We know and believe that knowledge of the truth of God is eternal life. Knowledge of God is the implicit obedience of every word of his, which is what sets us free from the domain of darkness and bondage. See John chapter 8 verse 32. John chapter 17 verse 3 and 1 John chapter 2 verses 3 to 5. The truth is that light that shines in the darkness and yet darkness does not comprehend it. See John chapter 1 verse 5. What do we then say of people who are supposed to know or should have known the truth and yet due to itching ears invite deceivers and manipulators to put them in bondage? Even our hope for a changed society, our children, the ones we should raise unto God as a generation of gods, are encouraged and compelled by their enslaved parents to submit to these agents of deception and darkness. Some of these innocent and free children are being told and made to believe by these evil agents that they need deliverance from some spirits trailing, stalking, and stagnating them some ancestral spirit or those remotely sent from their parents' African villages by relations, usually uncles. Some are told that their fortunes are being tied by their relations. As such, they would necessarily need deliverance. Deliverance may include, but not limited to, drinking some incantations to either vomit or neutralize the imaginary evil. Some are made to believe that any adverse health issue they may have is because of a generational curse or evil spell, which must be cast out and returned to the sender, popularly labeled return to sender, a common practice by fetish priests. It is generally believed that a society is better the more its population is educated. But today, we are witnessing a sad reversal of any gain we had ever made in the past. A rapid dimming of our light before our very eyes. The villain being the very institution, the church, that is supposed, commissioned to set the captive free. The said institution is now at the helm of enslavement, captivity, exploitation, extortion and bondage. I have had numerous conversations with the most educated elites of some African countries and was left speechless at the level of decimation of minds because of the evil deeds of some leaders of churches. Sadly, my people seem to relish their enslavement. As it is written, an astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. The prophets prophesy falsely, and the priests rule by their own power, and my people love to have it so. But what will you do in the end? 
Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 30 to 31. For as it is with the theory of economy of demand and supply, so it is with those who kindle fire and their accomplices who supply the firewood. See Proverbs chapter 26, verse 20. As it is written by the Apostle Paul in his second epistle to the Corinthians, For you put up with it if one brings you into bondage, if one devours you, if one takes from you, if one exalts himself, if one strikes you on the face. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 20. For some strange truth, the crowd appears to flock to those who deceive them with empty, feel-good words earthly miracles, signs and wonders, devoid of eternal value, while the undiluted truth of God is despised. The reason for such unfortunate trend is obvious. Those whose deeds are evil tend to love the ways of darkness, as it is written, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. John chapter 3 verses 19 to 20. Sadly, due to the faulty or shaky or wrong spiritual foundation upon which most of us are building our spiritual walk or life, we lack understanding of what it means to be established and rooted firmly in God's undiluted truth. Implicit obedience, which is our shield against all forms of malicious deception, manipulation, lies, and spiritual bondage. Although, while it is certainly true that God loves all and his mercies endure forever because God endures forever, yet, we must understand that God loves those who love him. See Proverbs chapter 8 verse 17. And he remains with us if we are with him. But if we forsake or deny him, he will forsake and deny us. See 2 Chronicles chapter 15 verse 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 11 to 13. As it is written, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to 27. A crucial question is how do we avoid and resist being put into bondage by agents of darkness?